Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with our today's practice questions, a quick gentle reminder. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS has already launched its official Telegram channel. What is that you have to do? Follow the link given in the description box or scan this QR code. This will take you to our official Telegram channel. Join the channel so that you get all the current affairs related updates. Let's get started and look into the first question. Consider the following statement. At present, only those who belong to Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism and Buddhism faiths are considered as scheduled caste. A person belonging to a scheduled caste in a state will be deemed to be a C in another state to which he or she migrates for the purpose of employment or education. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is none. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the scheduled caste. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When we look into the SC community, who are these people? These were the people who were once oppressed. These were the people who faced deprivation before. In order to make sure that they are empowered over a period of time, certain castes in India were added into one of the schedules called as the scheduled caste. According to constitution, scheduled caste order of 1950 only marginalized communities from Hinduism, Sikhism and Buddhism would fall under the SC category. It did not include Jainism. So the first statement that we have is wrong because Jainism is not included under the constitution scheduled caste order of 1950. So the first statement is wrong. When you look into the second statement, a person belonging to a scheduled caste in a state will be deemed to be a C in another state to which he or she migrates for the purpose of employment or education. This statement once again is wrong. What do you mean by it? Let's say for example, there is one of the castes. This caste is called as a scheduled caste in one of the states. Let's say for example, it is a scheduled caste in the state of Maharashtra. Now this person goes to the state of Uttar Pradesh. It is not declared so in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Will this person be entitled to reservation for the purpose of employment or education in the state of Uttar Pradesh? No. If it is present in Uttar Pradesh, then he may be entitled to it but if it is not it is only restricted to that state so it basically means that if a person migrates from one state to another he may not get the reservation benefits under the AC category now let's look into the next practice question Sarda act passed during the pre-independent period dealt with child marriage domestic violence rights of inheritance special marriage the answer to this is child marriage as part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section, when was the Sarda Act passed? What was the specific scenario as to why this Sarda Act was passed? Please put it on the comment section. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to prohibition of Child Marriage Act, which of the following statements is are correct? A child according to this act is a person who has not completed 18 years of age. All child marriages under all circumstances are void according to the act. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is none. Why have we taken both these practice questions? Because of the reference to the child marriage. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, a child according to this act is a person who has not completed 18 years of age. Since we are speaking about person, it is general neutral. But when you consider this act of prohibition of Child Marriage Act, it clearly goes on to say that for a man, it is 21 years of age and if it is a female, it is about 18 years of age. In this question, we are asking with respect to this act. So with respect to this act, child means a person who if a male has not completed 21 years of age and if it is a female has not completed 18 years of age since we are asking with respect to the act the first statement is wrong why because it is in general neutral terms and we are speaking about both male and the female which is a wrong statement according to the prohibition of child marriage act when you look into the second statement all child marriages under all circumstances are void according to the act this statement is also so wrong. When you look into section 3, it clearly goes on to say child marriages to be voidable at the option of contracting party being a child. 
what do we mean by it? Let's say for example, there is a child who's entered into a wedlock. The child has been married as well. After the child becomes a major, the child will be given a time of two years after she attains the majority. And at that particular moment, it is not by default void, but it can become voidable. So if the child who's become a major so decides within two years after attaining the majority, she can go to the court of law, file a case in the court of law and ultimately get it voidable. So it is not void by default under all circumstances but it is voidable however in specific circumstances in certain circumstances it is void when is it where a child being taken a minor is taken or enticed out of keeping of the lawful guardian by force compelled or by deceitful means induced to go from any place is sold for the purpose of marriage and made to go through a form of marriage or if the minor is married after which a minor is sold or trafficked or used for immoral purposes such marriage shall be null and void so remember there is a difference between void and voidable void basically means from the very start it is declared as void which means it is not acceptable for the law voidable basically means a specific condition has to be met if that specific condition is met only then it becomes the voidable so in this question what have we asked the statement reads all child marriages under all circumstances are void according to act this is a wrong statement it becomes voidable and only in certain circumstances it becomes void which is why the second statement is wrong now let's look into the next practice question India's first avalanche monitoring radar was installed in the state or the Union territory of Himachal Pradesh Jammu and Kashmir Sikkim and Uttarakhand the answer to this is Sikkim why have we taken this practice question because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to India gets its first avalanche monitoring radar in Sikkim an avalanche monitoring radar the first of its kind in India has been installed in North Sikkim by the Army and the Defense Geoinformatics and Research Establishment and this establishment happens to be a wing of the DRDO which is involved in forecasting and mitigation of avalanche hazards faced by the Army in the Himalayan region. This can detect avalanches within three seconds of its trigger. So this will help in saving of lives as well as the property as well. So remember it is in the state of Sikkim added to it besides being used for the detection of avalanches this radar can also be employed to detect landslides as well now let's look into the next practice question which of the following statements is are correct with respect to patta chitra it is a picture painted on a piece of cloth this form of art is closely related to mangala gauri temple and its traditions in bihar the materials used in the paint are from vegetable earth and mineral sources which of the statements are correct the answer to this is 1 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to Patta Chitra. Let us try and understand what are these options. When you look into the first option, yes, this happens to be a picture which is painted on a piece of cloth. Patta basically means cloth. Chitra basically means picture. Hence, Patta Chitra is a picture which is painted on a piece of cloth. This art form is closely related to Jagannath and the temple traditions in the Puri. So they usually depict images of gods, Jagannath most popularly and mythological stories as well as the folklore. It is not in Bihar, it is in the state of Odisha and few parts of West Bengal as well. So Patta Chitra is a type of ancient scroll painting that originated in the eastern states of India specifically in Odisha and in few parts in West Bengal and Odisha is widely regarded as the state that Patta Chitra originated in. When you look into the third state Yes, the materials used in the paint are from vegetable, earth as well as the mineral resources. Black is made out of lamb black, yellow from Haritala stone, red from single stone, white is prepared from crushed, boiled and filtered shells as well. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to India, consider the following statements. Monazite is a source of rare earth. Monazite contains thorium. Monazite occurs naturally in the entire Indian coastal stands in India. In India, government bodies only can process and export monazite. Which of the statements given above are correct? 
the answer to this is 1, 2 and 4. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2022. The third statement is incorrect. That is because monazite is not entirely found along the coastal areas of India. It is found along the Kerala coast, Tamil Nadu coast and in Odisha and it is not along the entire coastal sands in India. Which is why the third statement is wrong. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is carbon dating. Let us try and understand what is this carbon dating all about. This was developed by American chemist William Libby in 1946. What is carbon dating? It is a method used to determine the age of the matter that was once living. When we consider carbon, there are three types of carbon isotopes. One is what is called as carbon-12, next what is called as carbon-13 and third is what is called as carbon-14. So there are three isotopes of carbon. When you consider carbon-12, it has six protons, six neutrons and six electrons. When you consider carbon-13, it has six protons, six electrons and seven neutrons. And when you consider carbon-14, it has six protons, six electrons but eight neutrons. So if you consider the most stable one, what is it? It happens to be the carbon-12. Carbon-12 happens to be the most common isotope. The next heaviest carbon isotope happens to be 13. Both these together are called as stable isotopes that is because they do not decay into other forms of elements over a period of time. But if you consider carbon-14, carbon-14 happens to be unstable or radioactive in nature. So over a period of time, this atom will decay into a stable product. So it will decay with time. So when you consider carbon-12 and 13, they are stable isotopes and when you consider carbon-14, it is unstable but over a period of time, it may become a stable product. How does the carbon dating work? How are we able to interpret the age of the living organism with the help of the carbon dating? Plants get their carbon through the process of photosynthesis. Animals get it mainly through the food because plants and animals get their carbon from the atmosphere. They too acquire carbon-12 and carbon-14 isotopes in roughly the same proportion as is available in the atmosphere. But when these organisms die, the interactions with the atmosphere also stops which basically means the plants will stop taking these carbon animals will also stop taking the carbon and at the same time we also have human beings who will also stop consuming the carbon since there is no further intake of carbon now carbon 12 is stable that is what we discussed does not decay while carbon 14 is radioactive it decays so carbon 14 reduces to one half of itself in about 5730 years this is what is called as the half life so after a plant or an animal dies the ratio of carbon 12 to carbon 14 in the body or its remains begins to change this change can be measured and can be used to deduce the approximate time when the organism died so basically this residual active carbon decays at the constant rate and can be measured to get an estimate of to when that organism died so this method is used by experts to date the trees plants and animal remains as well as the human artifacts made of wood as well as leather can it be used to determine the age of the non-living things though extremely effective carbon dating cannot be applied in all circumstances specifically it cannot be used to determine the age of non-living things like rocks for example also, the age of things that are more than 40,000 to 50,000 years cannot be arrived through the carbon dating. This is primarily because 8 to 10 cycles of half-lives have been crossed. The amount of carbon-14 becomes almost negligible and undetectable, which is why we would not be able to use it for the non-living things. However, it can be used indirectly. Let's say, for example, if you have to ascertain the age of the non-living things, if there are dead organisms, Organisms which are present in that particular area, it can help in deciding when that inanimate object reached that particular place. So basically, it cannot be used directly but indirectly. If there are any living organisms which had once lived, we can take the living organisms and ultimately find out the age of that particular area as well. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.